I love you. Well, all I know is that talk about people getting older. I guess they don't have any mirrors around here. (laughs) Brother brother Mike Sarton and Sister Sandy and us two are great friends, and we we count that a privilege. You know, it's hard to find good, good friends. Friends that last a long time, it's hard to find. So we're, we're very, very happy to be here today. Glad for blue skies. Amen. And uh, so it's, it's awesome. It's a great day in the house of the Lord. I, someone reminded me that one time when we were here, the saints were in the Super Bowl. Does anybody remember that? We had a big move of God and there was no preaching. We were out early. (laughs) They said that we planned that. I don't know. We may need to plan something else for those saints. I don't know. But anyway, God bless you. (laughs) It's just great to... Be in the house of the Lord and have a good time. Hey, you can be seated. Thank you for standing. Terry is coming this morning to uh, preach to you, and you're going to be blessed. Amazingly so. But uh, that left me with this uh, job here. Terry has a number of books, seven or eight, I think, and they will, they will bless you. If you want to stop by the table out there, um, all different kinds of things. But the main one is the newest one, and it's called, aptly, it's called Survival Strategies. How many know we're at the end of this run? We, We really are. The things that we've talked about all of our life seeing happen are happening. So you might get that and find some encouragement in it. God bless you. Well, hallelujah. Are you glad you came to God's house today? Amen. How many just feel good today? Anybody just feel good today? Those of you that don't feel good, we'll get you at the end of the service pray you through and get God's blessings on you. We're going to believe the Lord today for healing in this house. Miracles. We've been so honored to see God do a lot of things, and He's going to continue today. You know, it's, it's, my mind goes today immediately to a lady in the church service that had a, some big thing, right? I guess it was in her stomach stuck out like a grapefruit. It was a cancer. Her kids were down from up north, and she was going to have it operated on the next day. And can I tell you, while everybody was worshiping and praising the Lord, and we were praying for each other, and all of a sudden, it was gone. Kids went back home. No surgery. We've seen her since then, and everything's well. (laughs) I'm telling you, all things are possible today. All things are possible today. All things are possible today. Don't sit there and say my situation is past help. It's not past help. All things are possible through the Lord. Get yourself ready. Start believing Him now. Start feeding your faith now. God's going to do great and wonderful things here today. Because all things are possible if you need a touch from God in your body in any form. And I don't hesitate to say this in the day we live in. If your mind needs a touch, that don't mean you're crazy. That means the world's crazy. Mm. Let Jesus get in there and get rid of all that fear and all that worry and 
So get yourself ready. We're going to start believing God from this moment that at the end here when we all get together after having been fed by the word of the Lord, good things are happening today. Hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. Well, I hate to ask you, but would you stand one more time? You look so comfortable. And uh, my wife says that if I was out there and had to stand as many times as we have people stand, that it would change things. So I don't know. Anyway, I'll bring to you Terry. She's going to speak this morning. And uh, she's a great Christian, a great lady of God, great mother and above all a great wife and above all of that a great grandmother <laughs> she's found a whole new reason for living uh, come on Terry God bless you hallelujah now, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, I take dominion and authority over every spirit in this building that is not like your spirit. I cast out all fear, all doubt, all unbelief. We replace it with love and faith and joy and peace and full of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus, give him a shout of praise. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. And you may be seated. My subject is very simple today. It's called Jesus' name. Anybody know anything about that name? Yes. Come on, you're going to help me preach today. In case y'all haven't noticed, there's a storm raging outside this building. It's a political storm. There's almost like a civil war type spirit. There's an immigration storm. There's a storm brewing in the South China Sea as China is rattling its sabers ready to take over the world. There's a storm of violence and murder. And it's gripped our nation and even our world. There's a storm in the White House, and there's a lot of storms in our own houses. There's a storm of fear. There's a storm of uncertainty. And then top all of that off with COVID. There are storms brewing inside this building today. There are confusion clouds in your mind. There's chaos that churns in our spirits. The spirits outside are infecting the inside. We're overwhelmed with thoughts, with feelings, with worries, with concerns. Our families, it looks like they're facing unsurmountable odds. And the feeling of insecurity starts creeping in around the edges. <clears throat> C.S. Lewis one of my favorite authors, gives us a reminder for today as the uncertainty looms. He says, when I lay these questions before God, I got no answer. But rather a special sort of a no answer. It was more like a silent certainty, not uncompassionate, as though he shook his head, not in refusal, but in just waving the whole question. Like, peace, child. Problem is, you just don't understand. And here's what I heard in my spirit recently. AJ? Now, that's middle C. It was middle C yesterday. It's going to be middle C tomorrow. It's going to be middle C a thousand years from now. It was middle C for Beethoven. And it's middle C for AJ. 
it doesn't matter what else changes, middle C is not going to change. <clears throat> Today, you and I need a middle C. I have had so much change in my life, and I know you have too. And I get weary of everything changing. <laughs> Just about the time I know where everything in Walmart and Kroger are, they change it. And I used to go right there, and it was there, and now it's not there. Oh, I have, I have some others here. Thank you. And then, do I wear a mask or do I not wear a mask? And how many times a day am I supposed to sanitize my hands? It's never ending. And the CDC cannot make up their minds what we're supposed to do. And it changes, and it changes, and it changes. And death comes, and then that changes everything. And disasters, as New Orleans well knows, rearrange our very comfortable existences. Relationships change. Health changes. And the weather is just crazy. And it's always changing. But God. Who ruled the earth last night is the same God that's going to rule the earth tonight. He never changes. He is still the same. And he still has the same plan that he had before the ages were ever created. My God never changes. <laughs> Do you know what? He's going to be in the same mood today as he was yesterday. He's going to have the same love for you today as he had 10 years ago before you messed up all that stuff. He never changes. AJ, play it again. He never changes. He never changes. There are some things in our life that really don't ever change. Amid all the craziness, he never changes. You know, you cannot alter God. He's our middle C. He is still the point in an ever-shifting world. And we need a point. We need an unchanging God. Be still and just know. In the middle of all your chaos and craziness, be still and know. I am God. I am God. And if I be for you, who can be against you? Though he creates, he was never created. Though he makes, he was never made. I love Psalms 90 verse 2. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever thou hadst formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. <laughs> whether it was C for Beethoven or C for A.G., whether it was God for Noah or God for us today, there are some things in this world that won't change. He doesn't check the weather. He makes the weather. He doesn't defy gravity. He created gravity. He isn't affected by health because he has no body. Since he has no body, he has no limitations. He is God. He is everywhere. He is omnipotent. He is God when I feel good. He is God when I feel bad. He is God when everything's perfect. And he is God when everything's a wreck. He's still God. He can be moving in Canada and Cambodia all at the same time. He can touch you in Louisiana and touch those in Lithuania. He has no boundaries. And you've got to remember today, in the middle of COVID, in the middle of craziness, in the middle of our ups and downs, we still have a middle C, and his name is Jesus. Woo! I'm going to tell you, Alaska and Africa, 
Africa make no difference to God. It's no distance for him. <laughs> David said, Psalms 139, 7 and 8, where can I run from you? <laughs> if I go up to the heavens, you're there. If I lie down in the grave, you're still there. Since no act brought him forth, there's no act that's going to take him out. He wasn't elected to office, so you ain't going to vote him out. Does he fear an earthquake? Does he tremble at a tornado? Are hurricanes and typhoons a surprise to him? I think not. He sleeps through storms. AJ, you're going to have to watch me. He sleeps through storms. He calms winds with a word. Cancer doesn't trouble him. Cemeteries don't disturb him. He was here before they ever got here. And he's going to be here long after it's all gone. Counselors can comfort you in a storm, but you need a God who can calm a storm. Friends can hold your hand at your deathbed, but my friend, you need a God who has defeated death. Philosophers can debate the meaning of life with you, but you need a God who can declare the meaning of life to you. He's God and his name is Jesus. <laughs> you need an unchanging God. You need that middle C that's always sounding the same. You don't need a God on a shelf or a God in a box or a God in a bottle. <laughs> you need a God who can place a hundred billion stars in our galaxy and know every one of them by name. And the hundred billion galaxies in our universe and he's not overtaxed with taking care of it all. You need a God who can shape two little fists of flesh into 75 to 100 billion nerve cells and put them in your skull and call it a brain. You need a God who can come in the soft of the night and touch you with the tenderness that you needed. You need a God. New Orleans needs a God. America needs a God. This world needs a God. And it's time for us to wake up and know that we have a God. We don't have to be swayed by all the bad news and all the circumstances and all the things. My hope is built on nothing less but Him and Him alone. I have good news. You have that God right here in this place today. That middle C that we keep hearing reminds me that he's my shepherd. He's my captain. He's my king. He's my help. He's my hope. He's my deliverer. He's my light. And he's my love. And he is your way. He is your truth. He is your word. And he is your priest. He's my refuge, my resurrection, and my rose of Sharon. He's the beginning. He's the begotten. And he's the beloved. He's the son of man, but he's the son of God. He is the servant, he is the sufferer, and he was our sacrifice. He is my God. In the words of the Bible, he's the fairest among 10,000, and he's altogether the lovely one. You know, names are a very interesting thing. Think about it. You can be standing in a crowded very noisy room 
And if somebody calls your name, (laughs) your ears perk up. Somehow you're able to hear that combination of consonants and vowels, even amidst a cacophony of noises, you can hear your name. Each of us possess a name. It's a name given to us by our parents. My parents chose to give me a boy's name. Terry. Okay. Perhaps maybe you were named after a relative or just given a name that your parents liked. Whatever the reason, however you came by it, there's really probably no huge significance behind your name or mine. But the name of Jesus stands out as a name above all other names. He's my never-changing middle C. His name's not hard to pronounce or spell. It's easy to say and it's easy to remember. It's only got two syllables and five letters and it's spelled just like it sounds. It's an easy name. It's a name picked by the Father. It's a name that points back to the Father. It's a name that paints God's portrait. Jesus. Just speak it today. Jesus. Come on, do it again. Jesus. Jesus. There's something about that name. When the father chose the name Jesus as the one his son would bear during the time of his humiliation, he was telling every creature in his universe that in one word, that his goal was redemption and salvation of mankind in the sweet name of Jesus. It's what he wanted. It's what he accomplished through that name, Jesus. Jesus and Jesus alone entered this sin-cursed world and stepped in the jaws of death and snatched victory from the icy grasp of death and defeat and handed it to his church. He alone conquered death, hell, and the grave and sin for all time. He's worthy of exaltation today. He's much more worthy than any words I could ever speak. He's more worthy than any worship I really could ever give. He's more worthy than getting up every Sunday morning and coming to church. He's more worthy than living like I should before him because he's my king. I am his servant and I am privileged and blessed. An unknown poet once put it like this. Alexander may build an empire. Napoleon may change the nations of the world. Newton may bring about an intellectual revolution. Edison will create a new world for science. Wyatt, he ushered in a new era of industry. But there's only one who can cleanse and transform a human heart, and that one is Jesus. Among all the great names in history, there's no greater name than the name of Jesus. And he's sitting here today. (laughs) To you, saints, who are doubting and weak and frail, and maybe you're nursing an unforgiving spirit, and Maybe you're just in great need to anybody here who's experiencing a dark night in their soul, trouble and affliction. If you feel fearful or you're feeling like you're being attacked and you're being tempted and you know you failed and you're lonely. Maybe you're the one suffering from a wounded spirit whose heart's just troubled and fearful. You're engaged in spiritual battles you never thought you would have to fight. 
Your prayers seem feeble. You're caught in the midst of the storm 2021. I want you to know you're serving an all powerful God. One with all power to solve all the problems. And it's simply a name Jesus. I don't know the power that's been oppressed in your life. Maybe it's stagnating your finances and wasting opportunities. And I don't know the power that's been confronting your marriage, your business, your academics, your family, your destiny, and even your health. But what I do know <laughs> is that there is greater all-powerful God who's still on the throne in 2021. How am I so sure of the power of that name? Just allow me a quick journey here. Let me rewind my life a few years ago and share how I know his power will work. Some of you have heard my story. Maybe someone here hasn't or maybe somebody needs to hear it again. But I was very, very sick for 10 years. I was diagnosed, of all things now, with an airborne virus of unknown origin. The first 30 days, I coded and almost died 21 times. And many more times after those first few days. The virus eventually invaded all my organs and started shutting them all down one by one. I was in the hospital almost continually for the first three years. They'd let me go home a few days at a time, but I couldn't sustain life on my own. I was in three different hospitals, including a huge research hospital. I finally ended up in Mayo Clinic in Minnesota. The doctors could not stop the progression of this unknown virus. They didn't know the strain of it, and they didn't know how to combat it. Antibiotics don't help with viruses, so they finally concluded that they would begin massive doses of steroids that could suppress the virus. So back into ICU I went and began the new treatment. And they hung bags of steroids and began pumping them into me. <laughs> So much that in the first 30 days, I gained 51 pounds because the steroids literally were blowing my body up. The doctors had asked me to sign a waiver prior to this treatment, stating that with the amount of steroids they were going to use, it would damage my bones with fractures and cause muscle wasting and weakness and mood changes and depression and, oh my Lord, the whole list of side effects. I signed the waiver because you know what? He may not come when I want him. But he's going to be there right on time. <laughs> they explained to me that if this didn't do what they wanted it to do, that I was going to die anyway, but they said I would die anyway, so we might as well give this a try. They predicted that maybe it would suppress the virus and could stop all the damage that was being done. It worked on the suppression of the virus, but when they would take me off the steroids, the virus would come back even worse than it was. It was almost like it was feeding it. So after years on steroids and in hospitals, my bones began to all fracture. Finally, one night, I woke in the middle of the night screaming, the pain was unbearable. I didn't know what was wrong, but it felt like my legs were just blowing apart and there was a blowtorch inside of them and I had no idea what was wrong with me. And after many CTs and MRIs, they confirmed that my bones were fracturing from all the steroids and that my pain would only continue to increase. They told me I would never walk again because my bones were simply too weak 
They said, don't even stand to go to the bathroom because your bones could all collapse. As much as I wanted, whenever I wanted, they began administering morphine because they believed I would die soon. My sweet little mother, who's about that tall, <laughs> she met that doctor in the hallway one day after they had given me so much morphine. I mean, every time I moaned, they just shoot me up with morphine. And <sighs> Mother met that doctor in the hall, and she was so mad. You'd have no mother. She pointed her little finger up at that doctor, and she said, you are giving her too much morphine. That doctor just kind of laughed at her, and he said, Miss Tenney, that's the least of y'all's worries. And yes, she's as addicted to drugs as any drug addict on the street, but that's a minor problem. So that season was hell season in my life. No relief from the pain and suffering. But I feel like I'm talking to some of you today that are living in hell season. More questions than answers. Sickness that can't be cured or explained. Emotions that can't even be controlled. Your brain has become one big question mark. And you're looking at somebody today that understands all of that. Since I was not able to walk, I found myself bound to a wheelchair. And during mind-boggling pain and organ damage that was causing problems in every part of my body. But as you can tell, that's not the end of the story. Because there is an all-powerful God who has an all-powerful name. And all I have to do from time to time is speak that name. And it may not work like a magic button. And it may not be like Santa Claus that just shows up with everything you want. But my friend, he is God. And he is able. And he will do anything that we can think or ask. After so many years of suffering, and there's so much more to this story that my few minutes today will not allow, but God showed up with healings and miracles and began turning my hell into healing. He's going to do the same in this building today. I was a damaged person in body, soul, and spirit. I was medically addicted to morphine. My liver was five times its normal size and extended out of my side like a big football. But God showed up. And I began to hear my middle C again. It had been drowned out by so many other things. But I heard the sound and I knew it was still the same that it had been from the creation of the universe I can't explain why he allows us to endure such times I even wrote a book it's okay to ask why <laughs> but all I do know is that he's a faithful God and that he gives me strength to endure and to come out of such times. And during all that, he's making me more like him. And you know what? That's the real goal. I've told you enough about the rough part. Let me just share a little bit about the good part. After a bit over four years in hospitals, the team of doctors believed the virus to be arrested by the steroids. All they believed, and they told me, that it would lie dormant in my system and it would return again. 
I looked at that doctor that day. And I told him, I said, I appreciate everything you've done for me. But I refuse that report. Because I believe the report of the Lord. And his report says, I am healed. His report says, I am filled. His report says, I am free. His report says, victory. <laughs> While I was in the hospital, I had posted scriptures all over the walls of my hospital room. Doctors thought I was crazy. I'm telling you, we wallpapered the walls with 8 by 11 sheets of paper that I had wrote and wrote, wrote. I had written scriptures about healing, faith, believing, anything that would build my mind because I kept hearing negative in this year. I kept hearing bad reports in this year. And I could look up on that wall and say, I am the Lord thy God that healeth thee. I am still God. If you are tied to a hospital bed or a wheelchair, Terry, I'm still God. It was a long road back. And it took me five years before I was declared to be okay enough to live at home and not in the hospital. There were a lot of healings from God along the way. A little side note here. There's a difference in healings and miracles. Healings can take time. Miracles are instantaneous. I was a recipient of both. <sighs> Through the power of God. <sighs> Much personal discipline in my part on eating right and living differently. My organs began mending. <laughs> little by little, day by day. They had told me I was going to have to have surgery on my heart. I went to have the last echo and angiogram and all that stuff they do before surgery. Doctor walked back into my room. He looked at me and said, I don't know what happened. <laughs> I guess the tests were wrong. I said, no, sir. It's the name of Jesus. <laughs> it's my all-powerful God. Then I had two really outstanding miracles. There's an old prophet, T.W. Barnes, in my life. He had prayed for me since the beginning of my sickness. And one day my husband was trying to get me out of the door of our house to go to yet another scan to record the deterioration of my bones. And the phone rang. And it was T.W. Barnes. He said, girl, what's the matter? <laughs> said, what's the matter? Really? We've been doing this for, what, six, seven years now? <laughs> I can't walk. That's a problem. Oh, he said, that's no problem. Well, <laughs> from my wheelchair, it looked like a problem. He said, no. He said, I was at the church praying this morning, and I had two visions. He said, the first one, I saw you standing. He said, I was in the pulpit. I saw you standing in the middle aisle. And he said, I could see through you like I could see your skeleton. And he said, he was an old country guy. He didn't have fancy words for anything. He said, I don't know, girl, but he said, it looked to me like all your bones had road maps in them. He said, there's cracks everywhere. <laughs> the pain I was living in could verify that. But he said, girl, I saw a second vision. I said, well, please share. <laughs> he said, I saw you standing in the same position, same way, same x-ray vision. But the second time I saw you, there wasn't a crack left in those bones. 
So he said, I don't know what's happening, but I do know that God has already paid for that on Calvary. And you stand on that name and you claim that you are healed from right now on. And I went to that scan as my husband was taking me in there. When I got the report back, they looked at me and said, we don't know what happened. We have no idea. We've never seen it like this before. But every bone in your body has come back into place and you can do whatever it is you want to do. That's the power of the name of Jesus. So whether you sit here today with a physical problem or an emotional problem or simply a situation you cannot live with any longer, I have come to stand before you today and tell you that there is a testimony that there is a God who can deliver, who can save, who can heal, who can comfort, who can fix a broken heart, who can fix a broken mind. He's more powerful than all the political leaders in our world. He's more powerful than all the presidents of any nation. <laughs> He's more powerful than any kind of power this earth has ever been able to accomplish. As a matter of fact, He's the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And He's here. <sighs> more than a great teacher than a worker of miracles <laughs> more than a self-help guru <laughs> he is the savior of all sinners all hail the power of Jesus name let angels prostrate fall bring forth that royal diadem and today we are going to crown him Lord of all Only one name is going to calm your nerves in 2021. <laughs> you know, Beethoven's music just won't work sometimes. Shakespeare's words ring with a void. But that name, <laughs> that sweet name of Jesus, it works. I guess there really is just something about that name. No, make it there's everything about that name. I have no more words to say. I've said it the best I could today. But here's what I have to say. If you've got a storm, I have a Savior. If you're sick, I know a healer. Your mind is racked with craziness. I know a peace speaker. And I know him by name. You have hurt and pain. I have a place for you to come lay it. You have a disease that has no cure. I hear a middle C in the atmosphere today. And he says, I've always been a healer. And I'm still a healer. All I can say today is if you need something, here it is. Here he is. And he's all that you need. Let's lift our hands to the Lord, everybody. Oh, hallelujah. What a beautiful name it is. There you go. I wonder what would happen if every hand in this house was reaching toward heaven right now. We're entertaining a miracle right now. Healing flows in this place. Come on and reach out for him right now. Focus on the name of Jesus right now. Yeah. 
Thank you, Jesus. Miracles are here right now, right now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus. All right, listen. We're going to sing some more. We're going to worship some more. I'm going to ask some questions of you. But would you please stay with us? If you're not in the group that I'm talking about, don't be dismissed. We won't be long. Stay in here and provide an atmosphere and a worship foundation for what God's about to do. Amen. Hallelujah. So you heard Terry's story. She just touched a few of the high points. point is, if there's something wrong with you, that can't be fixed. You've got diabetes, you've got heart trouble, you've got cancer, you've got growth, you've got all kind of internal problems. Got something wrong with you that needs a miracle from the Lord. If you have enough courage to get out in the aisle and walk down here right now and let us pray for you, I'm going to promise you Jesus is here now. You see, He's here with power, but you have to show forth a little extra. So if you don't want to be healed bad enough to get out of your pew and walk down here, then you hadn't reached that point yet. And I'm not throwing down on you, but I'm just telling you, take a step of faith. Take a step of faith. Take a step of faith. And get on down here as quick as you can. Quick as you can. You got something wrong with you that medical science is not going to fix. Ooh, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Now don't leave, don't leave. Just, just lift your hands back up to the Lord. Lift your hands back up to the Lord. Lift your hands back up to the Lord. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, yeah. 